You're watching FE Exam Prep with Anthony Fasano from Pass the FE Exam. In this video, we're going to calculate what torque is transmitted by the shaft of a gear to give you a better understanding of what you can expect during the FE Exam. This Pass the FE Exam video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. This week's problem was created and solved by Enrique Ivers, an engineer in training. Enrique, take it away. In this force transfer problem, we have two meshing spur gears that are arranged such that neither gear is turning and both are in equilibrium. The smaller gear has a radius of four centimeters and the shaft of this small gear carries a torsional moment of 75 Newton meters from an external motor. The larger gear has a radius of 20 centimeters. We're asked how much torque is transmitted by the shaft of the large gear, assuming 100% efficiency. We're provided with the following four options. A, 75 Newton meters. B, 150 Newton meters. C, 375 Newton meters. And D, 500 Newton meters. We can model the problem by envisioning two gears of different sizes with meshing teeth. As shown, the smaller gear is on the left and it's in red and the radius is four centimeters. The larger gear is on the right, it's green, and it has a radius of 20 centimeters. To simplify this problem, we can assume that only one pair of teeth are in contact with each other. This makes modeling the forces much easier. As the gears are not moving, we can apply Newton's third law and deduce that the forces are equal and opposing for both meshing gear teeth. Modeling this relationship, we can write that the equivalence equation F sub 1 equals F sub 2, where F sub 1 represents the force experienced by the smaller gear, and F sub 2 represents the force experienced by the larger gear. We should then recall that the torque resultant from a perpendicular force is that force multiplied by the radius. Therefore, the force experienced by the smaller gear is equal to the torque applied to the smaller gear by the shaft divided by the radius of the smaller gear. This then is equal to the force F sub two experienced by the larger gear. F sub two is then equal to the torque transmitted to the shaft of the larger gear divided by the radius of the larger gear. Simplifying this, we have T sub one, the torque transmitted by the shaft attached to the smaller gear, divided by the radius of the smaller gear, equal to T sub two, the torque experienced by the shaft of the larger gear, divided by the radius of the larger gear. Now, all of our variables are known, except for T sub two, and that's what we're searching for. So we substitute 75 Newton meters into the torque experienced by the smaller gear shaft. This is given to us at the beginning of the problem. We substitute four centimeters into the radius of the smaller gear and 20 centimeters into the radius of the larger gear, leaving T sub two. When we solve for T sub two, we find that it equals 375 Newton meters. So let's check back to our list of potential answers. A, 75 Newton meters, B, 150 Newton meters, C, 375 Newton meters, and D, 500 Newton meters. If we had applied our understanding of force transfer and the relationship between rotational torque and linear forces, we should have been able to deduce the answer to this problem at the very beginning. The transfer of force between different size gears would not be linear. Therefore, option A is incorrect. The two forces would not be equivalent to each other. 
the radius of the larger gear is five times greater than the smaller gear, thus making option B a force only two times greater, and option D a force nearly seven times greater, also clearly incorrect. Fortunately, we now know how to completely solve this problem, and our calculation matches answer C, 375 newton meters. We should choose this one. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will answer more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will read and respond to them. Maybe there's a specific topic that you need help with or a question that you need answered. Pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam.